In this clip, I answer a question about controlling container startup order in a multi-container app. Um, first up, so these are some uh, technical questions, not necessarily related to learning DevOps. So we're shifting focus a little bit. Um, uh, let's see, we got a first question up. What is the best strategy to delay your containers in order to keep them on a specific order like doing DB, Web, Rabbit, and so on? So the number one thing is, and this isn't even a DevOps thing, this is a distributed computing thing, is that if, I'm assuming you're talking about production, not local development workflow with something like Docker Compose. But if you're talking about production, all your apps have to be able to fail or retry. So the entire, like whether or not, this is before Docker, basically whatever you're using there, it has to recover in some fashion from not being able to talk to other services outside of its own. And this is a core principle of distributed computing. In fact, if you look up um, what a resource would be here is 12factor. 12factor.net is sort of, it's a decade old set of principles around the mindset of cloud native and distributed computing. Those are two different but similar types of things that uh, really it's about if I've got a bunch of servers or a bunch of things that my servers have to talk to, how do I or orchestrate all of those to be available when they're needing to be available? And the answer is you can't control startup, right? Because startup is only part of the problem. When you have to replace a container, if the other containers lose connection from it because a container or any other service goes down for a second, all those other services that are using it have to be able to recover. And so uh, unlike the old days where we had a single server and we put, you know, like the database and the website on the same server and that was always available and online um, until it went down, th that was easy. But now in this world where you have distributed computing, your containers and all of your services have to take that in mind. So they either need to have a retry, which if you're doing development, most um, develop sorry, most database drivers all have built-in retry designed in them. So they will actually retry to, you know, like MongoDB and Node.js actually even has a buffer protocol where it, if it can't connect, it'll hold the commands for a little bit to wait for the database to come back online. It's, it's just built into the driver uh, for your development language. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of stuff out there like that. And if, if your app doesn't do anything like that, then, and it just fails, the nice thing if you're using container orchestration is that part of that job of that orchestrator is if the container just crashes because it loses connection from something, then the orchestrator will restart, will basically start a new copy of that somewhere else. And that's one way to recover from failure. It's a little bit cleaner and um, less taxing on your systems if they just retry. But another way in Docker to do it is to just let your apps crash, essentially. And um, if then Docker will restart them based on your settings. So I know that's probably not the little click button answer. A lot of people might just answer, oh, you need to add retry to your Docker Compose or something. But that's not a production solution because it only has to do, that only has to do with original startup. And if you even Google for something like wait for it scripts, uh, those don't really solve the whole problem either. Because you're going to, one of the things is if you're going to start using containers, you're going to be updating them more often. That's part of the progress of implementing the DevOps mindset is things are going to be updated more often than they were in the past because that's one of the core tenets of DevOps is continually evolving and improving. So uh, when you start doing that, that means that any one piece of your puzzle has to be able to handle any other piece of the puzzle going down. And you can't really do that with startup order, if you know what I mean. Hopefully that helps. Um, it's it's a tough problem to solve if you're dealing with legacy apps, but uh, it's a continual... <laughs> You have to continually work on continuing uh, on the process of getting your apps to all handle failure, essentially. It's, it's not an easy problem, and it, it's, a, it's a process to go through. Thanks for watching. Click the subscribe, and the notification bell down there will let you know when I go live every week to take your questions on Docker and DevOps. You can watch these videos over here, or you can just go watch those cat videos you've been meaning to watch. <laughs>